This leaf sitting amongst this uh, really fine foliage really caught my attention. It's like it's suspended. <laughs> Just oh so gently being held in the air. There's not a whole lot of contrast here, but I think the leaf is light enough that it should stand out against a little bit darker background. I'm using a 105 at about f8. It's kind of dark this morning, but it's uh, overcast, so it's fairly flat light. So this should work okay. Well, sorry, I can't take you to Africa. <laughs> or some really cool wintry wonderland up north. You get the daily walk. An area that I just uh, finished a project on. I just finished the uh, laying out the zine and the proof has been sent off to be printed. So I'll share that with you when it comes back. The walks continue and I will continue to bring my camera along. Who knows, maybe there'll be a volume two. You might notice I have a new bag. It's a small bag. It's a it's a man purse. <laughs> Not really. I uh, actually picked this bag up. It's a handlebar bag for my bike. It's big enough to hold a few lenses or a camera and a lens. I uh, purchased this to uh, put on my bike and do some photography. But as it turns out, my bikes are both broke down. <laughs> Luckily, this comes with a strap and it's really the perfect size for a little walk around bag. So I'm going to use this whether I'm on a bike or not. It was very cheap, so it's not like a big deal. But I've been looking for something that wasn't a huge camera bag, but yet big enough to carry a couple primes easily. I can, I can carry some filters, a couple prime lenses, or a zoom lens, whatever. My little Sony A7R II will fit in here with a lens attached with lots of room to spare. And yet it's still very compact. It's very small. It's perfect for a old walk around bag. I just like the way this tree sticks up out of all this vegetation below it. Little pockets of contrast. I've made this image before with a different lens. It didn't make the zine, but I'll, I'll keep shooting it. Maybe it'll make the next one. I've noticed this on a few walks. It doesn't look a whole lot different than last time I was here. The lighting is actually more, I'm making this image a little more usable, a little more doable. I'm just attracted to this group of threes. We got these crossing uh, forks, some really interesting lines. I've had to get down low and kind of shoot up because this is kind of dark and the background's dark and I'd like it the background to be a little lighter so these darker uh, branches stand out a little bit more, give a little more contrast. It's kind of a balancing act. I'm trying to give enough blur to the background to make this stand out, but yet have enough information in sharp focus to uh, make the image work. So one of those things where I, I'm not going to really know until I get it on the computer and, and, and look close to see if I actually nailed this one. <laughs> but it has such potential. I, the only problem is the background's just a little too close in tones and it's a little too close to the subject but I'm still going to give this one a try. I 
recently watched a vlog. I believe it was on the uh, the Photographic Eye YouTube channel. Very interesting. It was talking about Vivian Mayer. I don't know if you're not familiar with who Vivian Mayer is. She's a, she was a street photographer who uh, whose work was discovered. I believe it was in like a storage bin, a container kind of thing. She had like a 100,000, 150,000 images discovered. And they were impressive images. And people were so surprised that this person was never discovered or really never had any work published. It might be hard for someone to understand how someone could be so prolific with a camera and yet her work was really never seen or discovered or noticed until she had passed away. It could be for a lot of reasons. It could have been that, that she was doing the photography for herself and didn't feel a need to share. I mean, that was a, that was a t different time. When I started photography, I never, nobody saw my photography but myself <laughs> and maybe a few family members. Or it could have been that she didn't know her photography was that good. Maybe she thought uh, it wasn't good enough to share or show. And it got me thinking. If I hadn't gone into photography as a job or as a profession years ago, would I still be making photos? Would I feel the need to, to share the images? I would imagine I could have been just like Vivian Mayer, especially if I would have lived in her time. I could have gone out and made images just for the fun of it. Maybe a print on the wall. I think because I did it as a job for so long, I felt like I needed an audience or someone to show my images to when I left journalism. I was used to being published daily and I, I found it satisfying to, uh, to share my work, even if it was at a newspaper. There were so many times where someone would come up to me when I was out on assignment and tell me how much they liked my photography or that when they saw an image in the newspaper, they could tell it was my photography without even looking at the name underneath it. And I think having that experience really made me want to share my photography. That's why I, I started this YouTube channel. Another reason that that uh, Vivian Mayer may not have been discovered or showed her work is maybe her friends and family didn't even really understand photography or, or really didn't care that much about photography or didn't see it, didn't see the value in it. I can kind of relate to that. I have more people that look at my photography that aren't friends and family than I do uh, that are friends and family. Most of my friends and family, I, I don't think they even know what I do photography-wise. It kind of makes sense. I mean, everybody's got busy lives. I just thought it was always interesting that the people that follow my photography or look at my work or, or collect my zines are people I've never met before. They just have connected with what I do. Anybody I went to school with in high school or grew up with, I would imagine most of those people don't even know I'm a photographer. <laughs> or they knew I worked at a newspaper a long time ago or something. But unless people are watching my, my work, and seeing following my work from a distance and, and never telling me, the people that I was closest to in life growing up most of them really haven't, uh, don't even know what, what I do with in photography. So I could see myself being a Vivian Mayer if I wouldn't have kind of found that uh, passion for sharing my photography early on. I mean, my, my parents, I think when I started considering photography as a profession, I don't think they were on board with it too much. I think it scared them a little bit. I think once I got a job and 
they could see that it was a real job and uh, I was actually paying bills with it. I think they got on board with it and then over time I think they really started to, to follow my work. So my, my parents and my mom even to this day, she still follows my photography and, and she, I think she appreciates what I do. But I have other family members that I don't think have an idea of the kind of photos I make nowadays. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. Can you see the tonal difference? How much lighter this is than the green around it. That's what caught my eye. If you've not seen the photographic eye, you might give it a look. I believe his name is Alex. Is really a, a much better talker than I am. He has a lot of experience and information when it comes to portraits, people photography. It might be worth a might be worth your time to check it out. Another channel that I occasionally will catch is Sean Tucker's channel. He's another one of those very good speakers. I, uh, on the other hand, am not. I have to go out and make photos and uh, hope I can muddle through it. Speaking is not my my uh, forte. I gotta rely heavily on trying to find a semi-interesting photograph. <laughs> <laughs> or I got nothing. If you like coming along on my photography journey and would like to help keep me out making photos and videos, consider picking up one of my zines or visit my PayPal donation page at my website ridenetsphotography.com. Most of all, don't forget to like and subscribe and why not leave a comment introducing yourself. I'm always interested in who stopped by my channel to say hello. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.